Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey, guys. Let's do it, shall we? Geography Now video. Every British constituent uh, country... Every British constituent country, territory, and crown dependency explained. Bunch of consonant -y words. Consonant. Let's go. Back here's another uh, filler video. Oh hey, Jagger peeps, I'm back. Here's another uh, filler video. Oh and uh, I got a Jagger Now mug. You can get this and other merch at JaggerNow.com. Like I always say, it's not selling out if it's your brand. <laughs> Original link to this video, top of the description, below that link to the Discord and stuff, hit all the, the buttons. No coffee in So this video is gonna kinda serve as like a reference video for the upcoming UK episode. Super <gasps> excited, but also super flustered because you know, the UK is like, you can't easily condense it. They once had the world's largest empire spanning every continent, making up about a quarter of the world's landmass. They have so many administrative subdivisions and cultures within said subdivisions. They even had me, or I had me. About a quarter of the world's landmass. They have so many administrative subdivisions and cultures within said subdivisions and dialects and British influence. So many and damn accents way across the world. It's gonna be intense, no doubt. Now I'm American, so I'm perfectly qualified to make this video. You know, as an American, it's kind of like you know they're kind of like our dad that we got pissed off at in our teenage years, and then we broke <laughs> the relationship, but then we kind of mended it and grew up. So true. And reconciled, and then we started to love them, especially in the '60s during Beatlemania. In the meantime, such a good analogy. It's like our dad that we got really mad at, and now we kind of like again. The UK is not just an island nation in Northern Europe, but rather it's an expanse of so many things going on thousands of miles apart across the world. And this video will basically serve as the reference guide to all the confusing British entities so that I don't have to spend so much time doing it in the UK episode. So you can just click on this video instead. So let's begin. First off, what is the difference between the UK and Great Britain? Okay, well, it's... We'll let him do it. All right, so the UK... I think Great Britain does not include Northern Ireland. And I think the UK does. I think Great Britain is just England, Wales, Scotland, and the UK is like everything. I could be wrong. Jeez, I should know by now. Great Britain is essentially the big island and the largest part of the country, made up of three constituent countries, <laughs> England, Scotland, and Wales. You've probably heard of these three. And yes, they are within themselves considered separate countries. They have their own cultures, traditions, and councils, parliaments, and so on. Yet, they are still under the overarching I'm authority fine. of the UK, so it's like three countries that report to one system. England has nine regions made up of 48 counties. Scotland has 32 council areas, and Wales has 22 principal areas, or county boroughs. Scotland basically became a part of the UK in 1707. Some say it was more like 100 years prior to that when James the Sixth of Scotland became the King of England, which opened up the door. But the point is, it's been going on for centuries. Wales joined earlier in 1536 when King Henry VIII enforced a bill that joined the two. Both Scotland and Wales are Celtic in their roots. Uh, learning about Ang Wales seem to hang out or, ha or hold off English rule for a really long time. It seemed when I learned about it, despite it being like right there. Um so they are essentially the cousins of the Irish. They even have their own languages. However, Scots and Scottish Gaelic are kind of, it's kind of like a dying language. Few people speak it. Whereas Wales fares a little better in the linguistic maintenance department oh, as oh, about oh. a sixth to a fifth of the Welsh population still speaks Welsh pretty fluently. So that is Great Britain. It is just the geographic term for the conglomeration of England, Scotland, and Wales. Depending the on island. who you ask, some might say this also applies to the small islands off the coast of the constituents, such as, but not limited to, Orkneys? the Isle of Wight, the Isle of Anglesey, the Orkney, Hebrides, and Shetland islands off the coast of scotland and so on all except for this one but we'll get to that in a isle bit. of From man there, we have northern ireland no one knows exactly what to call it some say it's a country some say it's a province some say it's a region they can't even decide if they have an official flag or not but the point is northern ireland is the last part of the puzzle that makes up the geographical uk or the united kingdom of great britain and northern ireland it's in, it's in the name this is the most recent finalized addition to the kingdom completed in 1921 Probably. we kind of explained a lot of this in the ireland episode so i'm not going to go too far into it but basically the majority of Northern Irish people are descendants of Protestant British colonials that came in in the 12th century. They have 11 district councils and they kind of have this weird home rule system where people can choose to either have Irish or British or both citizenship, stuff like that. Now we get to the fun stuff, all of the things outside of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Now, the UK has 16 or 17 territories, depending on how you look at one of them, divided into three different types in three oceans, two seas. 
is Antarctica the the one of them? and one separate continental landmass. Let's start with the closest entity, the three crown dependencies, which are islands that do not belong to any of the constituent nations. These islands probably have some of the highest levels of autonomy within the areas that fall under the constitutional jurisdiction of the UK. They have their own parliaments, legal systems, and the right to self-determination. They even have their own banking authority that allows them to print out their own variant of the pound sterling that's on par with the British pound. These are the Isle of Man and the Balawicks of Jersey and Guernsey. What the f is a bailiwick. It's basically an area that is governed by a bailiff. Whoa, which in the holy sideburns. British definition is like a judicial manager, meaning the person in charge must be a qualified lawyer appointed by the crown and holds the office until retirement. In that regard, the Isle of Man is just governed by a lieutenant governor. So in a nutshell, are the Isle of Man and the bailiwicks of... So the UK owns these islands here? Where's Majorica? Jersey and Guernsey. What the f*** is a bailiwick? It's basically an area that is governed by a bailiff, which in the British definition is like a judicial manager, meaning the person in charge must be a qualified lawyer appointed by the crown and holds the office until retirement. In that regard, the Isle of Man is just governed by a lieutenant governor. So in a nutshell, the Isle of Man is another Celtic-based entity. The demonym of people here is Manx. They have their own language as well. At one point, they're under Norway, but such a unique flag, the three, the three like knight armor legs. I wonder where that came from. The name of people here is Manx. They have their own language as well. At one point, they're under Norway, but then the Norwegians sold it back to the King of Scotland. Did someone say Norway? Hey, it's Jonas from the Sweden episode. Hey. Remember him? How have you been? What have you been up to? Well, I, I live here now. Oh yeah, man. A lot of people have been living in this house. <laughs> Jersey and Guernsey, or the Channel Islands, on the other hand, are unique areas that have a fusion British-Norman-French culture. They even have their own kind of fusion languages, which are kind of like dialects of the ancient Norman. Welcome to French Lane, the heart of Jersey's French Quarter. C'est is le bienvenus, bienvenu, à la rue et français, français, parlons. Bienvenue à la rue de... Okay language which was like a predecessor of French and many of the people in the islands are bilingual with French as well due to the proximity and regular interaction with France it's like right there from there we move on to the is that where New Jersey gets its name from this Jersey the rest of the bots or British overseas territories within Europe we have Gibraltar the small peninsula attached to the southern part of Spain as well as Acrotiria and Decalia exclaves within the island of Cyprus we already explained these in the Cyprus and Spain episodes but basically Gibraltar was captured in 1704 during the Spanish War of Succession and then it was wait what's the difference between an enclave uh, uh, seated in Basically, Gibraltar was captured in 1704 during the Spanish War of Succession, and then it was ceded in 1713 under the Treaty of Utrecht, Utrecht. known for its big ass rock and macaque monkeys and a weird airport Macaque. that crosses traffic with cars. And the people even speak their own dialect of Spanish called Yanito. They even issued their own currency variant of the pound called the Gibraltar Pound. The exclaves of Akrotiri and Dekelia are basically leftover military bases with some extra land retained after Cyprus gained independence after being a British colony. They use euros here instead of pounds. Now we go to the Caribbean, Turks and Caicos, the British Virgin Islands, Anguilla, uh, Bermuda the German Islands, and Montserrat. Basically, these islands share a very similar culture and demographic vibe to the other Caribbean island nations, you know, like Calypso music, Carnival, Scotch bonnets, and half of all their food, and they're all tax havens. At one point, three of these, Montserrat, Turks and Caicos, and Cayman Islands, actually ceded to become a part of the short-lived West Indies Federation before breaking up again, and then they voted to remain on. It's interesting that, like, Jamaica is the one country in the Caribbean that I think of that speaks English. Oh, Bahamas? Because French, Spanish, 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 Spanish under British authority. The British Virgin Islands and Turks and Caicos used the US dollars as their currencies. Anguilla was once joined with St. Kitts and Nevis until they broke away in the 50s. They're like, nah. They, along with Montserrat, used That's the That's a East super cool uh, little emblem there, the three dolphins. I like that a lot. Caribbean dollar is their currency. The Cayman Islands have their own Cayman Islands dollar, which has parity with the U.S. dollar. And also Montserrat. They so they have to change all of these bills to now Charles's face? Had that huge volcanic eruption that destroyed their old capital, Plymouth, and then they had to move it down south to Braids. You can still visit and see the cool aftermath. Now we move on to the Atlantic, starting with Bermuda. Hey. Bermuda is basically the U.K.'s Hawaii. It has a tropical climate. It's expensive. It's far it has out the wealthiest there. inhabitants out of all the territories with an average annual salary around 100 k it produces the highest nominal GDP at somewhere around 6.5 billion annually. It's a big deal. It's also home to the UK's most important Atlantic naval port, and they use their own Bermudian dollar as currency, which has
has parity with the US dollar. From there, we have the mid-southern Atlantic island territories of St. Helena, Ascension, and Tristan de Cunha. All together collect Napoleon. Collectively, they only make up a little territories of St. Helena, Ascension, and Tristan de Cunha. What about St. George's? Um What's his name? Oh my god. Altogether, collectively, they only make up a little bit over 6,000 people in all three of these, about 70% of which live on St. Helena. Now, these three used to be one unit called St. Helena and Dependencies until 2009 when a new constitutional ruling gave all three separate equal territory status. Basically, they were discovered by the Portuguese, hence the Portuguese name Tristan da Cunha. St. Helena, which is also where Napoleon was exiled that one time, has its own bank that creates St. Helena in pounds on parity with pound sterling. Tristan da Cunha is actually made up of six islands, only Tristan da Cunha is inhabited and it is the only active volcanic island of the group. Now we go way down south to the controversial Falkland Islands and South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands. For one, you gotta know these are all disputed with Argentina. Argentina calls these the Islas Malvinas. They even name things after these islands in their country like schools and whatever stadiums and at one point they even put the map of the islands on the 50 peso banknote and it was the site of that war that happened in the 80s where like 900 people died so yeah lots happened here. As for the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands, these are temporarily inhabited glacier islands mostly for research and military patrol in the antarctic what is his name not scott not abinson oh my god he got uh, areas. They comprise of the largest island, South Georgia, about 106 miles long, 170 kilometers, with multiple bays and fjords. Then you have the 11 Sandwich Islands, which are much colder in climate and some are volcanically active. And all around these areas, you can find fascinating endemic wildlife and plant species. Penguins! From there, we move up to a little warmer climate in the British Indian Ocean Territory, which, like Akrotirian Decalia, is a military base inhabited with about 3,000 temporary stationed military personnel, mostly British and American, on the Chagos Archipelago go just south of the Maldives. Now, this is kind of a country. Do you guys think that polar bears could survive really well in Antarctica as like an invasive species because there are so many penguins that wouldn't really be able to get away? Anyways, okay. Controversial one because it is the site of the forced relocation of a couple hundred Chagosian people from the 60s and 70s. They moved them to Mauritius and the UK in order to build the military bases. For those you don't know, Chagosians are basically a Creole group originally brought over by the French as slaves that are now mostly African descended with some Asian, South Asian mixed in. They even speak their own Creole, which is French based. This is a whole other topic we could discuss, but we don't really have too much time for it. I recommend researching it on your own time if you're interested. And finally, we cut to the other side of the world and hit the Pitcairn Islands made up of four volcanic islands, Henderson, Ducey, Oeno, and the only inhabited one, Pitcairn, which only has about 50 people. Now, this is an interesting one. All of these 50-ish 50? 50 people are pretty much descendants of the bounty mutineers and Tahitians from the 18th century. They well, wouldn't that mean that in inbred? They even speak their own Creole language known as Pitcairn. Only two people have been born on the island prior to 2012, and in 2005, two people, a married couple, migrated and obtained citizenship. There is one school, the electricity is run off of a diesel generator that goes from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. They use the New Zealand dollar, and the only way to arrive is by longboat to ferry people between anchored ships to the coast. There is no natural harbor. This is considered one of the most difficult places to go to in the world. And uh, it's a wow. place to go if you uh, really appreciate isolation. Yeah. Finally, depending on how you look at it the uk has a claim on antarctica despite the antarctic treaty which states that no one can really claim any part of antarctica this slice wedge of land includes the antarctic peninsula which also has areas that are also disputed with argentina and chile this is where the british go when they want to explore and research the antarctic they which makes sense good. because it's just kind of a hop skip away from the south georgia and south sandwich islands yeah it's so. so cool look at how that the it's it's sort of connected to the Patagonia or the bottom of Argentina and Chile like it, it like circles around uh, there's probably some tectonic reason for that Oh, yeah. So there you go. That's basically all of the UK overseas dependencies and territories. Three crown dependencies, overseas territories, Great Britain, which has three constituent countries, plus Northern Ireland, which collectively makes the UK. It's a lot. And we're not even going to get into the Commonwealth realm because that's a little bit irrelevant, but it's kind of tied into the Canada traitor. UK. No, I'm joking. 
because it's like they were former colonies, but then they still maintained a little bit of a tie to the UK and they're connected and they still claim the UK monarch as their technical head of state, but the monarch doesn't have power over them. But, but hey, that's basically how you break it down. So there you go. When the UK episode comes up, I'm just going to say click on this video so you can just get I'm it prepared. over with and learn about it so I don't have to explain it in the UK video because otherwise it would take forever. In any case, I'm excited for the UK episode. Uh, it's going to be a crazy one, but I think I can handle it. Stay cool. Stay tuned. Hope you guys are all doing well, and I will see you guys next time, all right? That was interesting. Hope you guys learned something again, or can teach me down there in the comments. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, very interesting. And uh, I can't wait for the UK episode. Full one. See you guys next time. Bye.